This week on the 77% Street Debate. Fishers cannot stand the competition and it's a livelihood matter. People must eat. All those dynamites and all those illegal activities are being perpetrated by the artisanal fisher who is now complaining. This, you go. this cannot be no, a monologue. Is, we have to on. hear from other people as that well. Is, no, 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 no. Allow me to go. do my job. The 77% is in Elmina town, a place that is famed for its old Portuguese castles, but it's also popular for its fishing industry, very vibrant. Unfortunately, that sector is being threatened by illegal, unreported, and also unregulated fishing. And why is that and who is responsible? Well, no one better to answer that for me than the industry players. And we're actually going to begin with Richard. He's a journalist here, an investigative journalist who's covered this issue extensively. Can you please tell me why fishing is so important? not just in Elmina but in Ghana in general. About 10% of Ghana's population is represented by the fishing industry so we have the youth and then the children as well but over the period uh, it, it moved from generation to generation but now the fisheries resources are dwindling. All right let's talk to fishers or fisher folk who actually do the work. Justice you've been fishing for quite a long time can you tell me what the situation was when you first started fishing compared to how it is now? Formerly, we are having about 20 canoes. Now, we are having about 60 canoes. Yeah. That's one of the factors. And two, we are having the oil in our sea. What has been dropped to the sea, which is ballast water. Mm -hmm. All these things are not being checked. So probably, our catch will go down. Okay, so I want to come to Nana, who also used to be a fisherman, but now, as I understand it, you're more into the business side of things. So you went and got educated. When you started fishing, or when you got into the business, what was it like compared to what it is now? And is what uh, Justice is saying resonating with you? Like uh, Mr. Kwame Damwa, to rather give us the statistics so that we can begin from there. Well, I asked you the question first, because before we get to the statistics, you're living the experience. Yeah, because we have to be speaking to fact, and he is in charge of that. All right. The Fishes Commission takes data, and so they should be speaking to those statistics, then we can make a case out of All it. All right, let's then speak to uh, Kwame. As you've heard, he does work for the Fisheries Commission here, and this is a body that is in charge of regulating the industry in this country. So, Nana asked a very important question. What does the data say? The data is uh, showing that uh, there's a decline of fish stocks in our cities. By what percentage? Um, Give us some numbers, please. I will not be specific here because Surely, it's Surely, the Fisheries estimate. Commission doesn't have the, numbers. No, we have, we have the numbers, but what I want to say is that some of these things are estimates, so you just have to uh, be real with it. Okay, so Kwame is obviously hesitant to give us numbers, be they estimates or not. But I want to come back to Nana, uh, because I'm guessing you definitely have seen a dwindling, as he's described it, of stocks. But how bad is the situation? Because from uh, my infancy, when my father used to go to see the catches that were being made, and currently what is being landed, you go to see, you spend so much money on premix fuel, you, so many people go to see, you come with just a basket, just a pan or two or something. Mm. The value not even up to $10, uh, $20, it's, 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 really, it's really a hell. 10% okay. of the population depends directly and indirectly on the fish value chain. There's a whole lot, uh, poverty eradication, food security. This is what artisanal fishing is doing mm -hmm. for country and global as well. So I want to come back to Kwame because we've mentioned artisanal fishers, uh, but we also know that these huge industrial vessels who are here on the same waters, what percentage do they make out of all the fish that is caught? I can tell you that the Fisheries Commission has had a lot of uh, regulations that is being implemented to ensure that this particular issue is curtailed. We all understand that, yes, there's dwindling stocks, but all has come, about, come, has come by due to the fact that fishers are using a whole lot of obnoxious substances to fish. They are implementing a whole lot of things that is causing all these depleted stocks. Let's and so get, let's, we can't let's, lay it let's on get, the Let's get to the issues. No, let's, get to the, let's get to the issues. Yep. And I'd like to hear from Richard because you have this sort of bird's eye view of this issue. You know, we've heard that there's an environmental problem. We've heard that it could be uh, dwindling resources in the seas. But what are the key ones? The Fisheries Commission man indicated that um, fishermen are using obnoxious substances, the DDT, dynamite, live fishing, and other things. Can you explain to our viewers who have uh, no uh, idea what uh, that is? Exactly. DDT is a poisonous uh, chemical that is even used in killing rodents. They also use dynamite, so they blast when they go to the sea to enable them to get the fish from there. And then if you talk about light fishing, it is an implement they use to attract the fishes so the that lights. they catch them, yeah. the light. But 
the fishermen, if you speak with them, they explain that, well, as a result of the industrial fleet, the trawl fleets, um, the numbers, and then the kind of activities that they are undertaking on the sea, they call something psycho. And you see, this psycho business, it is the illegal transshipment of fish at sea. And that the fishermen feel that it is the one that is causing a lot of havoc to them. And that is why they are put to the wall. So they use some of these substances. And then if you look at the kind of activity, they catch the fish and then they divide them into three. The first one is the desirable catch. The second one is the bycatch. And the third one you saw in the documentary I produced, they pour them back into the sea. And this poisons the sea where they throw these fish um, down into the sea. It poisons them. I want us to take two steps back because we've now focused, you know, you're focusing on the industrial vessels. But Kwame said something interesting, which is that the fisher folk are also responsible to some extent, and you did add to that, the use of poisonous substances, the wrong size of fishing nets, um, and also light fishing, which is not allowed in this country. Are you responsible for the situation you find yourself in now? You know, artisanal fishing has existed as far back as 1700, long before government and regulation came into being. Now the regulation coming into being takes the governance of our of fisheries from the local people to the commission. So it is then for the commission to enforce the laws. So artisanal fishers, due to, just as uh, uh, Richard talked about, just, just due to the fact that vessels, all sort of things, are competing with them even within the inshore exclusive zone. And what else can the fisher do? All right, and just some explanations for our viewers who might not be familiar with these fishing terms. Uh, the zone that he's talking about, the industrial vessels are regulated and are only allowed to have these target fish, the deep sea fish, and the artisanal uh, fishers or fisher folk who do use these canoes uh, use pelagic fish, which are smaller and closer to shore. Uh, but Kwame, let's come back to you. Just some, I'm coming, I'm coming. Um, no, 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 be, be, because we've heard that it's your job to protect these people. However, you don't seem to be doing that. And the issue of industrial vessels keeps coming up. And I know for a fact that the Fisheries Commission are the ones who license these vessels. Yeah. So are you licensing too many of them? No, are you not considering the plight of the, of the local man? No, uh, that can't be entirely true. Whatever I mentioned, the illegal activities, you know, they mentioned almost about eight or nine of them. Seven of them is being perpetrated by the complainant for now. So the you're accusing none of all this. All those dynamite and all those illegal activities are being perpetrated by the artisanal fisher who is now complaining. The Fisheries Commission is doing a lot. For instance, as part of uh, making sure that we can tell these illegal activities, we're giving numbers to all the canoes. Them. So how many so canoes, immediately how many we'll canoes be able, are registered For to now, operate? as I'm speaking, uh, in what Almina we have in region. our system is in uh, 4, 14,500. And, and so how many, how many uh, as industrial time goes vessels? On, as time goes on. How many industrial vessels? Yeah, are? industrial vessels about four years back. The numbers were about 144. As I'm speaking to you, the numbers are 76. But I want to hear from uh, Jacob, from Justice, sorry, because, you know, Kwame is defending himself and saying, look, the reason why you're blaming us is because you dug yourself in this hole in the first place. I know for a fact that you practice psycho fishing. Is it because you're greedy? Is it because you want to break the law? Or was there a cause and effect? Psycho is a word of somebody's language. It's the bycatch. Bycatch. Yeah. And I'm happy Richard come out that the moment they drop the fish into the sea, they are polluting the sea. It's about more 50 years over. People are taking this bycatch, exchange with fruits. Yeah. And taking it to a community, which is wrong. As you are saying that, uh, psycho, psycho. Who are those people depending on the cycle? Right. I told the whole issue is the GS. GS we are using, taking a fish. It's if, let's take it a size of one inch. And using two inch, the fish will go away. Mm -hmm. No, about 50 years now, we just use the airboat motor with the wooden canoe. All these industrial vessels have the advanced modern fishing mm -hmm. for deep, so many miles. Yeah. They process the fish over there, and the moment they come to the port, it's well processed. Okay, I want to hear from Richard, because these vessels, who do they belong to? You know, is it Ghanaians transshipping to other Ghanaians? Who is on them? Why is it happening, and how does it happen? So some are um, fronted by Ghanaians, and so the Ghanaians lead them to register them, and there are others that are 
wholly owned by foreigners. Is that it, allowed, by the way, for these uh, for these vessels to be foreign owned? Well, so the law says that there is no there, there, there is nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, it is Ghanaians who are employed in these vessels, and then they undertake all of these activities. Okay, you know, justice is saying, how can we possibly compete with these huge industrial vessels? They have advanced ways of catching fish, and so they're forced to go deeper into the ocean to get just a handful. And so for yeah. him, there's nothing wrong with transshipment. Okay. But what is the long-term effect of that? Well, I, I, I think he has a point, um, and it goes to regulations. Why wouldn't the government sit down and say, look, psycho farms or that system has come to stay? How can we regulate it? Because it goes down there and it, it, it pollutes the sea and then it comes um, to shore and it also disturbs um, those who have to spend money to go catch fish. I mean, it reduces the price and then they, they don't get uh, value for um, the input, right. right? So I would just suggest that the government should regulated and it's simple as that so for you it's an issue of it's regulation a, it's an issue of regula okay so we've just heard from emmanuel that it surely is not possible for the fisher folk here to compete particularly when it comes to the prices because they're not really having to toil so hard to get the fish and by the time the fish comes here it's ridiculously cheap compared to that which has been caught by local fisher folk um rose to what extent like how much cheaper is it and if the psycho fish, as we say, is not is hurting the canoe fisher folk. Why buy it? Why are the fishmongers buying it? A fishmonger sometimes lack money or ready cash to buy the big size fishes. It comes with a high price, so they resort to buying the psycho. And buying the psycho, no law prevents them from buying. It. So why not buy it? Okay, can you tell me by how much? What's the margin? Are we talking like $2 of a difference? Are we talking 5 And how much does that difference mean to the people in these communities? 10 to 20 CDs? Yes. Okay, it's significant for a community that is probably living on less than $1 yes. a day. All right, Nana, let me come back to you because first of all, you've been accused of being a practitioner of all of these illegal fishing methods. What do you have to say about that? Kwame was saying that... Uh, Yes, we are practicing illegalities. But the point is that the competition, we cannot stand it. Fishers cannot stand the competition. And it's a livelihood matter. People must eat. But Kwame, so to, we, in his defense, we, let me, let me, because Kwame is saying they're doing their best. That a couple of years ago, there were over 100 industrial vessels out there. And now they're just over, over 70. Is that helping? I do not mean Fishers Commission is not working. Except that probably we'll have to consider changing their approach. Can we begin thinking of participatory monitoring, control, and surveillance? Because I, I was just in Senegal, and you realize that government has resource artisanal fishers to monitor, do the food monitoring for, for, for the states. Let's hear from But Rose. let's settle this once, that artisanal fishers in Ghana are ready to abide by the law. And even uh, prior to the close season, we have called that the ministry should enforce the ban on all illegalities. Kwame, I hope you can get me. Regulation 32 bans dumping. So we have laws to protect, to, to stop dumping. Mm -hmm. So we cannot make that argument. Let's, let's, hold on, hold on. Let me make my point. Let me make my point. Let me make my point. Then you go. This cannot be no, a monologue. Is, we have to on. hear from other people as that well. Is, no, but let no, no, no. Allow me to do my job, please. Allow me to do my job. No, that is actually... Let's get Kwame to respond. That's misinformation. The law says that you cannot do illegal transshipment. So what is legal transshipment? When one vessel maybe get a fault and then they seek permission from us, they'll be able to transfer the fish on one, the other one to the other canoe. It is allowed. But then the illegal one is when we have not given license to trawlers to fish on pelagic fishes, and then they do, they, are not, they will not be able to bring that fish to the port. And so they find ways and means with other vessels, and then they try ship illegally those fishes that they are not allowed to fish on. Let me yes. speak to Nana because he is burning. Um, what do you want to say to me, Nana? And then I'm going to come to you, Justice. You know, when I'm making arguments in artisanal fishing, I always want to ground that in law. Mm -hmm. Now, Section 132 of our law says that you are can... Are you a lawyer or a fisherman? No, I am a fisher. <laughs> but because I want to practice well, I have learned the law that governs the fishery. Correct. Now, Section 132 says that you can only transship when you have authorization from the commission. And Regulation 33.5 says that you cannot transship at sea. However, if there are instances where the community will have to authorize, then we will have to look at the kind of fish they are landing, 
If you are landing small pelagics, then it means you are fishing within the inshore exclusive zone. However, the vessels have been given license to do trawl, bottom trawl. Right. So if you are landing small pelagics, where are you getting the small pelagics from? Mm -hmm. We are asking the commission to hasten its implementation so that fishers can actually have a role to play. Okay. Okay, so Nana is obviously very passionate about this issue. Uh, this is obviously directly affecting you. And I asked you earlier, do you have a license to do this transshipment that you're doing? And if you're speaking honestly, do you do it at sea, which is illegal? I could hear this man saying that. Dumping, dumping, dumping. You won't get the target fish, the industrial vessels. They will, whatever, they will get the bycatch attached with. So, not to take it or not to dump it. What do you expect to do with? He is saying that uh, the, above the 30 meters, there you'll get a small paradise. Then I'm telling him, he's not a fisherman. Let me, let me hear from yeah, Richard, sorry, because, sorry, because he, was, he was on one of these industrial vessels and you saw something interesting. You observed that these industrial vessels are not necessarily practicing what is lawful, using the wrong size nets and therefore catching fish that they shouldn't be catching, even if it was meant to be bycatch. And that is true. Um, they set out uh, from the Tema where they are based and then they go, they show the right size net to them. As soon as they set off, then they use the unauthorized fishing net. The Fisheries Commission has, has placed licensed. observers in these vessels. It is the commission that pays them. And so if they are not lucky, the observer will not even go. You've heard about one person who got missing and the person is yet to be found, yeah. an observer. Mm. If you go and you decide to do the right thing, you are frowned upon by the authorities who have Put placed you there. you there to even do the right thing by reporting the illegalities on the sea. Okay, let's hear from the person from the commission. Yeah. Uh, now, we're hearing that there's a conflict of interest here because number one, you're the ones who license these vessels. Yeah. And to be fair, the bulk of the fi funding that comes from that industry, from industrial vessels, is from licensing. On top of that, the observers allegedly come back and report things which are not taken up. You know Why the, is that? Do you know the funny part of it? Some tell of these me, tell issues, me. It becomes allegation, allegation, and allegation. These observers, because of all these complaints, we decided to pick observers as fish, fishers, their kids, observers that are coming from fishing homes. So if they give giving very wrong reports to the Fisheries Commission, a different one, what about what they come and then tell their parents? We why would they be giving you, what why happens, would they be on, misreporting? What, you know, when the trawlers come to the port, we inspect them. Then we will not be able to locate any illegal uh, uh, net. Artisan officers, some of them, that are the same people that are complaining. They just keep the net for them for a fee, and then they meet them at high seas, and then they send the net to them. But the issue is that the Navy would not be able to be with each of the vessels. But Funding those agencies Kwame, are not Kwame, allow me, allow me, allow me to push back yeah. a little bit, it because is. you're saying to me that this industry is happening in the deep seas. You don't have eyes and ears there, save for the observers, who, as, we are see, as you've just uh, admitted to me, are not always reliable. Right? So you don't really know what's going on. I'm not out saying there. that it's not always liable. There are challenges because it's a human institution. You just told me what that sometimes to say, they give what you I'm false to reports. Say that as part of the measures, the best way to go is attach certain video cameras that will be able to get more of the views as high as it is. All right. Speaking of technology, let me come back to Emmanuel because what more can be done in terms of technology to improve not just regulation but implementation of, uh, of these laws? None of them mentioned um, aquaculture. Okay, so aquaculture is actually um, culturing the fish yourself and not uh, leaving it to the mercy of nature. We've been blessed with the uh, largest water resource, um, and we have a lot of different species within the, um, I mean, those waters. Yeah. We have not been able to call, uh, successful culture some of these fishes that can add to our dwindling stock. Actually, as I understand it, the fish that is being caught in Ghana is still not enough to sustain the population. That is it. So no, yeah. we, 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 yeah. we, are, we are talking about the problem now, but the actual problem is that there's a very huge demand. Why don't you look at aquaculture, something that we can um, well regulate All or right. well invest into? That's one of the options to help resolve this problem. Right, Nana? Yeah, as uh, artisanal fishers, we, we, we support aquaculture. But? We, however, disagree with the use of fish to fish feed. Uh -huh. You know, to rely on fish meal for aquaculture is unsustainable. It's against UN Convention on Food. It's 
is just a threat to artisanal fishery. Right, because so, you need fish to feed fish. Can't we do it better? That Emmanuel, you're being told that the venture you're about to go into yeah. is unsustainable. So, actually, he mentioned one example of um, fish meal being used. There are other alternatives. Such we have as? Soya beans uh, cake. We have other protein um, alternatives that can be used. We are, we are feeding the country not less than, let's say, 50,000 metric tons. You understand? Yeah, but fish feed is only one of the problems of aquaculture. There's yes. also the issue of pollution, poisoned fish. And Nana is asking a valid question. So, Why not look for other methods? Yes. You know, aquaculture is actually a, con um, a farming environment that you have control over. So you can virtually control everything, even when it comes to pollution. Okay, Justice. Okay, what I can say, the state is important. The fish meal mm -hmm. from other countries. Whilst we are in the coast and buying fish meal from Kumasi, whilst the same fish have been dumped. Because it's juvenile fish, they're not even meant to be out of the ocean in the first There's place. There's no company who intentionally burn it for well, just to cut the juvenile fish. Right. It's fishing. All, everything can go in. If only we monitor the GS, mm -hmm. there's nothing against. Okay, uh, Justice, thank you so much because now we're getting into solutions, monitoring of the gear that is being used yeah. by fisher folk. So can you give me some solutions of what can be done to help re rejuvenate and revive the ocean? Start to produce our own fish feed within the country. Um, try to produce quality uh, fingerlings. Try to make it on a large scale. Give opportunity for um, commercial businesses to take this in up on a large scale. All right. It will really help. So research and development, as you said earlier, yeah. innovation and training. Yeah. Kwame, I'd like to hear some solutions. No. We've kept saying that it's closed season for fishing, which has been done to try and yeah. bring back up the, the stock. The, the stock, the yeah. stocks. Uh, but yeah. what do these fishermen and fisher folk do during that season? I mean, most of them depend entirely on yeah. fishing. Yeah. So we realize that we're giving them a lot of training so that they'll be able to do alternative livelihood. These are some of the things that we brought the aquaculture for food and job. And we also said that we're doing trainings for the youth. This is a very big uh, program that the Fisheries Commission is doing this year. And so these are some of the programs. We are training some of the women in uh, artifacts and other things that they'll be able to do or, so as part of their livelihood during this season. All right, fantastic. Let me hear from Nana because we are now looking for solutions before we close. Once the laws are enforced, then every player knows where to be. Now we also ask that the monitoring, control and surveillance should be participatory. So you, resource users must be central point in the monitoring, control and surveillance. Finally, uh, the key stakeholders, the canoe and the geo owners who own to the decisions or who own the economic and decision making power at the uh, landing beaches should be involved in the participation in the decision making in the governance and in the management of our resources. Fantastic. Uh, I think those are actually incredible solutions, Nana. Rose, let's hear from you. There should be alternative livelihood for the fisher folks, but it's unfortunate some of the fisher folks don't want to divert from fishing. You want the youth to shift away from the fishing so that they will be low dependent on fishing. Yeah. Many people depend on fishing business, and which will also lead to this kind of overfishing and unsustainable fishing. Richard, we started with you, let's close with you. I will go for a two-way approach. Yes, an alternative livelihood uh, program. But you see, they, we cannot only train them on that because this is their main livelihood. They depend on the sea. Yeah. They've been fishing all their lives. And so they should do that hand in hand. They do uh, the livelihood um, in parts, and then they also concentrate on their fishing. The rest of, all, of, of that also borders on implementation. And it is also a two-way traffic. The fisher folks should do their part. They should uh, adhere to the regulations and the, the, uh, the laws that are governing what they are expected to do. So together, they, the Fisheries Commission, the ministry, they will be able to protect the livelihood. They see that they so much depend on. They will be able to protect that. All right. Well, thank you so much, all of you. Oh, Justice, I don't want to leave you out, but we only mm. have 30 seconds. Okay. My problem is the small fishermen who create dynamite. All these things are being blocked. <laughs> so, if only you want to, I mean, streamline the way, the best thing is where this unsightedness comes from. It's better you check over there. Yeah. Before that, you come and harass the fishermen. Right. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, Justice has had a habit, at least in this debate, of asking a simple question with what could be a very powerful answer. And to you, I ask, what is the cost of the fish on your plate? Thank you for watching.